I'm Morgan Gans Pedersen, and you're watching Rubbish Check. Hello, and welcome back to the Rubbish Check YouTube channel. We're sitting down today for the final video on now when it's of his new signing. We've signed a striker. I'm still in shock a week later, but here we are. Uh, so I'm joined by two Plymouth fans today from the Argyle Life podcast. I will link it all down below. Let's just introduce them. Aaron, how are we doing? Are we good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm a bit hot and flustered. I've not long finished fives. Um, didn't go too well, but, you know, it's what it is. Um, but, yeah, a little bit sweaty. But ignore that. No, we'll, uh, we'll focus on now, Lenny. Don't you worry about that today. And Sam, how are we doing? Are we good? Yeah, I'm very good indeed. Thank you. Just just finished work, so uh, not not as uh, sweaty as Aaron, but uh, tired. I think is, is the word. No, Warm day, for humid both. day. Yeah. No, definitely is. Thank you for both coming. I'm really appreciate it. So let's get into it. I'll start with you, Sam. Now, now, any surprise at Rovers? Uh, fans will have not watched too much League One football. I'll be honest. So can you just give us an insight into what now Lennis is all about? Yeah, absolutely. I think he is, as much as it can be a bit of a cliche, as, as close as you can probably get the devil to a complete centre forward, in that he there isn't really anything he lacks. He is he's quick. He had he has that real sort of um um sort of searing turn of pace that he can just get behind the defender, get his shoulder down and bolt towards goal. He's strong, he'll win one to ones, he he can head a ball. Uh, he can bring the ball down and bring others into play. He's technically gifted and he's got a, a good eye for goal as well. Um, he wasn't actually our top scorer last season, but I think that's a little bit deceptive in that Ryan Hardy, who was our top scorer, took all our penalties and he got a lot of goals in the in the checker trade. Um, well, sorry, the, the Papa John scored now. The uh, did actually we, we got to the final of it and I can't even remember his name. That's what an irrelevant competition it is. But um, yeah, um, he scored a lot of goals in that, which was no spectrum against weakened teams to an extent. So I think Niall Ennis was undoubtedly our best striker and, and our best goal scorer, even if he wasn't actually the top goal scorer. Um I thought he was he, he was brilliant. Um last season we added goals, he brought others into play. Um he scored the promotion winning goal against against Burton Albion um to get us out of the league. And he scored some other really cracking goals over the course of the season. He's he, he he's absolutely got everything. He was far too good for League One. I think we all kind of knew that if we didn't go up, he would certainly go this summer. Obviously, as it turned out, we have gone up and he's, he's gone anyway. Um, but yeah, very, very good striker. Aaron, is there anything you'd add to that? Is there anything about Ennis? Because Rovers, I'm sure you want to see much of Rovers either. We played counter-attacking style uh, last year and that's kind of our way of scoring goals. Would you say it'd suit that? I would say, actually, um, I agree with everything that Sam said, but also his hold-up play is surprisingly good for somebody who's, what, 5'8", 5'7", 5'8". Um, brings the tens in or our tens um, in quite well. He's like, like Sam was saying, he's like all round game is pretty good, and he's like quite good at everything. It's really weird to have a player like that, um, especially in an Argyle shirt. Um, but yeah, I think in terms of like, keeping hold of the ball, um, finding that pass, you know, with a, with a little bit of coaching and a little bit of championship experience, I can see him being like a real asset to to Blackburn. Annoyingly. Um, but yeah, like, like Sam was saying, arguably our best striker in every department, but the actual goal scored. So I'll come back to you, Sam. So uh, now Lenny will probably come into this side and be a player that we use off the bench quite a bit, an impact player. Do you think that'd suit him, or do you think he maybe deserves, you know, a better shot at Championship football? Um, naturally, I'm biased, and I'd like to like in the same here. We would have started every week, but um, I. I think he's someone who will grab an opportunity. I think even if he doesn't start the season, it's first choice. I mean, I'm guessing, well, it's probably probably Gallagher for you, is it? First choice up front? At the moment, yeah, yeah unless we sign yeah. someone else. Depending on who comes in. So I think it's one of those, he probably will be coming in sort of knowing he's not going to start the season as, as, as regular. Um, yeah, well, Sam Gallagher, um, former Argo youth product, so I've kind of followed a bit of his career. We, we sold him to Chelsea and then he, I think, via, via Southampton went to yourselves, wasn't it? But that, that's by the by. Yeah. Um, he... Or did we sell him directly to Southampton? I can't remember. I might be mixing him up with someone else. I feel Chelsea were involved in there somewhere. I could have got that wrong, but um, maybe he was only linked with them. Anyway, um, here's talk about Niall Ennis. Yeah, um, I think he he will grab an opportunity. He even if he doesn't immediately start the season, when maybe somebody gets injured, he comes in, gets his chance. I think he'll play well enough that he will make himself tough to drop. Um, obviously, the, the kind of the the unspoken question is um how well he, he steps up to 
Champions level, but obviously it's all very good world saying what I'm saying. It happened against League One defences. I think he has the skill set to do it because I think he has obviously the the, the, the technical ability, like I mentioned. I think the, the physicality is it, important because you have the defenders that are a bit quick and there's no more sort of lower league war horses like you necessarily used to have um, in the Championship. The, the, the quality has trickled down now. The players who maybe 15 years ago would have been playing in the Premier League are now playing in the Championship. And, and that means obviously it's a much more physical division, much more much more pace, much more skill from defenders. And I think because he has that, that aspect to him as well as the technical side, he will he will be good enough to step up. And yeah, I think he'll 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 come on, he'll do a job, he can hold up the ball like Aaron should bring others into play. But I think if and when he gets a run of three or four games in the team, he'll make himself tough to drop. Oh, that sounds good. I like the idea of him, you know, coming up and doing the jump. Aaron do you just want to give us an insight on Plymouth as a general, you know, what setups Ennis been playing in since he joined? <clears throat> well, we sort, of, we sort of switched halfway through the season, but it's, it's predominantly a back five with two wing backs, um, a CDM or two CDMs with, with two tens or one ten and two up top. So he's either been playing up top on his own or in a two, um, which, which we had four arguably four completely different strikers or different attacking options. Let's not call them strikers as such, but um, where where we had a bit of everything, we could like mix that up really well. We could, we could change in game. Um, and he was used in rotation um, predominantly because of his injury record. I feel like he loves a little knock, loves a niggle. Um, and if we, if he can, you know, stay away from those, he would have, he most probably would have started or played a part in pretty much every game, um, yeah. So it's, it's, it's sort of a sort of a switch between a one or two up top um, with two tens or one ten. I think that's a good sign for us. We play four two three one. We normally have the fullbacks are still quite attacking in that four two three one. So uh, it sounds like a few similarities. Uh, Aaron just mentioned the injury record there, Sam. That's what I wanted to come on now. Last year, 38 appearances, I think it was, in the league for him. How many games does he normally miss over a season through injury? Do you know? Is it quite a regular yeah, thing? Yeah, I mean, being out? That, is, that, that is just the only downside. It's his, it's his injury record. I mean, maybe the fact he played 38 games, I think, maybe doesn't quite reflect the fact he, he would kind of quite rarely play a full 90. He would, he would often have to be brought off just to preserve his legs, preserve the minutes um, that, that he played. Um, and whilst he did play 38 games, it, I think that maybe, you know, give give the false picture of how how long he was available for. Because obviously, 38 games—that's well, that's nearly 80 percent of of the games. But obviously, he he, I wouldn't say he was available for 80 percent of the season because he would be often just brought off with you know an, an hour gone or, or 70 minutes gone with an arm resting him for the Tuesday game. Um, so it's great as he is. The injury is it's probably the only downside to him. Um, he, he will often just have you know very you know little minor complaints. Not uh, he, he'll very rarely be the one to miss like two or three months, or whatever. He'll always have maybe some muscle injury in the background that we're just a little bit wary of. Maybe some muscle injury that we're um, managing his minutes for. Um, and I think the, the only time where I think he, he would notice he didn't have anything like that was in the final month of the season where he was just absolutely fantastic. And like I say, got us over the line with the promotion winning goal. Um, yeah, I think that's the only strike. But maybe in a way that would be less bad playing for a a club that he isn't the, the, the kind of undisputed best striker because he, he won't play so many, many minutes naturally. Therefore, he won't actually need to be to be rested because naturally there will be more rotation uh, anyway. So I think that could be could be something that actually works in your favour that you can kind of play him when you want to a bit more, I think. Yeah, I think that's definitely what we're well, looking at in terms of his injury. Of those, of those 38 games that he played in, he came off the bench 19 times and came off 16 times. So that's what, 30... Five games, a massive yeah, break. Three, three ninety minutes. So. Three, yeah. three ninety minutes all season, which, which, um, yeah, might not speak to him personally as well though, because Schumacher like to use all five subs and like to rotate and like to freshen things up in game. So that that might not be a complete reflection on Niall, but that also doesn't look brilliant in terms of, as Sam was saying, those those knocks and those niggles. So, 
No, that's definitely one thing we'll have to keep an eye on. I just wanted to finish, since we'll both be in the Championship next year, just a general chat about Plymouth. Aaron, I'll come to you first. I'll let you have the first word. How do you see the season going? To be, to be honest, in truth, I don't care as long as we stay up. I think there's at least three, four, maybe five teams worse than us or in a worse state or in um, in a bit of a meltdown. Or, you know, there's, there's always one that goes down with financial mismanagement so we're hoping that there's two of those next season and then we can play somebody else off the park so um a lot of it will come down to our recruitment um i'm sure people mainly ipswich fans will be aware that we are lone fc lucky fc deflection fc um by the league fc in january um whatever um and it will come down to our signings and they will be huge and keeping hold of dan scar is massive keeping hold of ryan hardy is a brilliant option um, up front, and yeah, it, losing Ennis is, is a shame, but I, I trust this recruitment team to get it right. Sam, do you record the same? Do you think you'll have enough to stay up? If Stephen Schumacher stays, yes, absolutely. Um, I, as I've said on, on the Argyle Live podcast so many times, I think he's just an extraordinarily good manager, and I think it's no discredit to our squad or to our I'm so sorry I keep pausing because I'm holding my iPhone in my hand. My camera's going all over the place. If any viewers hate a wobbly camera, I do apologise. You're going to hate me, but sorry. Uh, going back to the issue, um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm on record as saying that. Well, obviously our squad is good and our, our club is good and our squad setup is good. If you, if I think if Ryan Lowe had not have gone to Preston when he did, we wouldn't have come top two last year. We maybe wouldn't have even come top six last year. I think Schumacher is just that good that he gets a decent squad not a exemplary squad, a good squad, and he turns that into a 101-point winning squad. Now, where I'm going with this is, on paper, is our squad next season going to be good enough to stay up? I think probably no, it won't be. I think we're probably going to have the weakest squad in the league, maybe Rotherham, I don't know, depending on who, how their recruitment goes. I think we're probably going to have one of, if not the weakest squads in the league, but I think we have a manager who is just so good, who adds that value in his tactical awareness and his in-game decision-making, that he'll drag us a few positions higher than we maybe have any right to be. Um, so I think we'll kind of come maybe somewhere in that 16th to 20th ballpark at the moment. But it's so early and recruitment is, is obviously by far the biggest factor. So depending how that goes, we'll, we'll see. No, I think you're right. I think I agree with Aaron. There'll be someone as well financially. Birmingham are probably on the brink of it. You've got Cardiff who look in a mess as well. And then there's always that team down there you don't expect. So I think you'll be fine. I don't see any of the three that come up actually going back down. But uh, we'll get into predictions. That might all change, like you say, with recruitment. But that's where we're round off. Thank you to both of you for coming on. Aaron, just want to tell everyone where they can find the Argyle Life podcast. Oh, yeah. Good good shout. Um, on Spotify, um, on... Where else is it, Sam? It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Uh, Just yeah, um, I, I, iTunes. That's not, yeah. It's still called yeah, iTunes. It's called that's the Apple one, anyway. Yeah. There's, there's people that listen on smart speakers and stuff. Just yeah, just do that. Just ask Alexa yeah. for uh, Argyle Life. Um, it's actually the Green and White Pod, uh, brought to you by Argyle Life. But yeah, um, there. Or what's the what's the app tag? Argyle Life eighteen eighty six, I believe. There. Yes, it is. Find it Perfect. Down. I'll link it all below yeah. as well for them. If anyone wants to check it out, go down and check it out as well. Uh, plenty of VFL content and championship content. Just don't content. listen to anything Aaron just said if you want to find it, basically. <laughs> I'll link it below. We'll, I'll cut that bit out. We'll link it down below. No, thank you to both Sorry. of you for coming on. Really appreciate it. It's been a good chat as well. And hopefully we can uh, have a chat later in the season when we both have to make the mammoth trip. There's no doubt the so-called fixed computer is going to put us on a Tuesday night at both places. So, uh We'll oh, look yeah. forward to it, but that's where Randolph, maybe a Friday night on Sky, you never know in this division, but thank you for coming on, like I say, and thanks everyone for watching. Hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment as well, and we'll see you soon for a new video.